After 155 years, the true pathophysiology of Meniere's disease remains elusive. Theories so far are anatomical variation in the size or the position of the endolymphatic sac and duct, viral inflammation or autoimmune involvement of the sac, or a combination of these, or a genetically determined abnormality of endolymph control. It was thought that there is a continuous flow of endolymph from the apex of the cochlea towards the endolymphatic sac. Since the 1960s, the predominant theory for the mechanism of Meniere's vertigo attacks has been Schuchnecht's rupture theory. A rupture of Reisner's membrane in the cochlea results in potassium intoxication of the perilymph. It seems unlikely that such a distant event could cause an effect on the vestibular side. Experiments in guinea pig ears imply that apical cochlear hydrops is usually cleared locally by radial flow. Longitudinal flow towards the endolymphatic sac occurs when radial clearance is insufficient. If excessive hydrops cannot be cleared by radial flow, the endolymphatic sac attempts to clear it. The sac contains hydrophilic glycoproteins. Endolymph from the cochlea moves towards the sac. It may clear it, but if the endolymphatic duct is in some way blocked, endolymph fills the endolymphatic sinus. If the sac still cannot clear it, endolymph refluxes through the valve of bust and past the utricle into the horizontal canal ampulla. It is now known that stimulation of the utricle alone can cause vertigo with nystagmus. Therefore, the nystagmus seen during a Meniere's attack could be due to a combined stimulation of the utricle and the horizontal canal receptor. If the endolymphatic duct obstruction is overcome, the sac may eventually clear the hydrops. Changing direction of nystagmus is likely due to endolymph moving in one direction and then in the opposite direction. As the endolymphatic sac becomes more dysfunctional, the attacks cease as the hydrops involves the cochlea, vestibule and the canals. The cause of the initial cochlear hydrops in Meniere's disease is unknown, but it could be initiated by detached otoconia from the saccule obstructing the reuniting duct. The hydrops moves into the saccule. As more otoconia are released from the damaged saccule, they move toward the utricle and then obstruct the endolymphatic duct, the vestibular aqueduct, and proximal endolymphatic sac as it tries to clear the hydrops and the otoconia. Increasing hydrops then damages the utricle with further release of otoconia. The hydrops eventually involves the entire inner ear. Similarity of the age of onset of Meniere's disease and benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, rare in children, occasional in teenagers, increasing in prevalence from the age of 20, most between 30 and 60 years, with an onset older than 60 years in approximately one third of patients, raises the possibility that the two conditions have the same fundamental cause.